The island of Corsica, a hundred miles off the south coast of France, has a lot going for it. Temperate climate, sparkling waters, striking beauty. But like many islands, what it lacks is carbon-based energy resources. So for years now, various forms of renewable energy have been tried here. With an average of more than 210 sunny days per year, the island is a natural for solar power. And with precipitous mountains in the center of the island, hydroelectric power has been a key source of energy. But now billions of private and public urals are being spent to determine exactly how the island can use its natural resources to the best advantage. In the process, the island has become a real-time laboratory for testing energy installations and strategies. The private sector, for example, is developing a huge solar and wind park on a mountaintop at the north end of the island. The area is sometimes shrouded in clouds, but there's almost always wind. So the developers hope to charge large lithium-ion batteries both day and night. This may not be the sunniest part of France, but it has to be one of the windiest, with winds regularly gusting between 100 and 120 miles an hour. Winds so strong that first-generation wind turbines sometimes have to be shut down. Once the modern wind turbines are installed next fall, the site at maximum capacity can pump enough electricity into the power grid to supply 5,000 homes. The power uh, produced here on the island is very, very expensive in comparison to the continent. Therefore, this island, of course, is very, very interesting for new technologies which can decrease the price of production. It's the state-run electrical utility EDF which is supplying the biggest part of the investment on the island, building a coordinating infrastructure which includes a quick startup thermal plant and energy storage and control schemes to maximize renewable energy use. The man in charge has spent much of his career managing electricity on islands, and he believes they are the best proving ground for techniques which can later be expanded across continents. An island uh, is an isolated electrical system, so you work on it on the limits uh, uh, much more than uh, in an interconnected system, and particularly with uh, the renewables, uh, because there is a technical limit to integrate renewables, and here in Corsica, as in other islands, we've already reached it. That technical limit for renewable energy, the experts say, is about 30 percent. Beyond that, the whole system may become unstable. That's because the amount of energy supply generated from solar or wind is constantly rising and falling over the course of a day. But demand changes, too. As the evening begins to fall, lights and heating systems come on, and demand is at its peak. In the case of Corsica, that's normally between 8 and 10 in the evening, just at the moment when the supply from solar power drops to zero and winds often start to diminish. Managing the constantly rising and falling demand and supply becomes a real puzzle. To even out the supply, EDF is spending 340 million euros on huge diesel power generators, which can come online in a matter of minutes, and 200 million on a major new dam one of four on the island which will store water that can almost instantly be sent to a generating plant which can supply up to a tenth of the island's electrical demand. An even more innovative storage facility is being developed by the University of Corsica. Near the city of Ajaccio, researchers have set up large solar panel arrays which power a system that breaks down water into hydrogen and oxygen. They are stored until needed and then sent to fuel cells to make electricity. The plant can go online in a matter of minutes when demand peaks. Like in any laboratory, not every experiment on Corsica turns out to be a winner. In fact, on this very same site back in the 80s, there was a solar project that was only moderately successful and eventually abandoned. And not all energy experiments are large in scale, or for the moment, financially viable. Some involve individual homeowners. There are the traditional rooftop solar generators of the kind Marius Angeli installs. Various subsidies will pay for just about half of the installation, and he expects to pay off the rest within seven years. But retiree Dominique Collin is part of an even more elaborate experiment. Soon, he too will have solar panels on his roof and a storage battery in his garden shed. But already, EDF has installed a management system which allows the electric utility to take energy from his solar system, but it also can cut off his consumption by turning off his electric heating for periods of up to 15 minutes. That control over consumption, EDF believes, will allow the company to go beyond the 30 percent renewable energy limit. And to coordinate both supply and now demand, EDF is building a high-tech control center which will regulate the island's electrical grid. Our mission is to ensure 24 hours per day, uh, in real time, the balance between consumption 
and production. And uh, one of the main challenges of the operator that you can see is to maximize the contribution to renewable energies to the whole system. So the life-size laboratory on Corsica is giving researchers and operators real experience on how to handle renewable energies in widely varying conditions, making them useful even when the wind doesn't blow or the sun doesn't shine. Jim Bitterman, CNN, Ajaccio, Corsica.